the more the people, the more easy to, to do Prajalpa. <clears throat> Everybody trying to yeah take the space and the time to to say something about him or to say something maybe he thinks that will be interesting or to attract attention. Um, and then it's I yeah I found and I live the situations uh, already. I found that it's uh, more difficult. Um, actually, I have a small <coughs> quote from Shila Prabhupada uh, from a lecture on Shrimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse 6. It was in Los Angeles, January 3rd, in uh, 1974. So Prabhupada was saying, <coughs> We shall not waste our time talking this politics, that politics, this sociology, this cinema, this affair, no. We have nothing to do with that. This is called Prajalpa, unnecessary talking. Talking means decreasing the life. Talking. So why should you decrease your life unnecessarily? Every moment you have to utilize whether it is used for Krishna, this is sadhana. This is sadhana, practicing, unnecessarily making enemies, unnecessarily, you are our subordinate, I am your master. Who is master? Everyone is master. Nobody is master. Unnecessarily. Okay, thank you very so much. We can see, sorry, so we, we can see that it's even um, reduces the duration of life as to do Prajal uh, and it takes us away from Krishna and from our focus um, on Krishna actually even maybe bringing us to passion and ignorance if we are not uh, um, and even uh, a mode of goodness, it has a tendency to us and to agitate our mind and uh, uh, also to agitate uh, oh, okay. all the senses and is not very beneficial. Okay, thank you very uh, much. Megan? Yeah, thank you very much. We, let's go on with the other Mataji. We can give you a couple of minutes just to finish. Hare Krishna. Um, thank you, Anta, for sharing and the effectiveness. Um, so, I just want to share my personal experience as you have seen my heart. So, um, I find that um, with an unsteady sadhana, especially if I don't manage to Chant my japa in the Alekuti japa time, then my mind becomes very restless. And, um, and in these times, I'm much more inclined to uh, be ungrounded and inclined to speak about one thing and subject matters. And um, yes, in, in finding a solution to this, I I conclude that um, making sure to like Jamana Sukhapu was mentioning the other devotees that we should have when we study sadhana and good chanting so that the mind is not restless and that we're not inclined to want to enjoy without the Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Megan, Mataji. Okay, we'll have a break now. We didn't have a Gayatri break. We should have a 10 minute Gayatri break. Some of you will want to chant Gayatri. And we'll continue 10 minutes. All right? Thank, thank you, Lord.
Hare Krishna. Can we begin again? Um, I think so. Okay, so we just heard from Mataji's Annabella and Megan Mataji. They were describing about Prajapa. Annabelle had very nice references. One from Prabhupada. Was it a Prabhupada letter? Or from a, something, a purport? I think it was a letter. A letter, right. And Megan Mataji was telling about her own experiences. She finds it very important for her to chant good rounds, to have a good morning program that will help her to keep her mind away from talking a lot of nonsense. Very true. If we have a good sadhana, if we fill our mind more with Krishna consciousness, then there's no thought, there's no scope for talking nonsense, for prajapa. Nonsense talk breeds nonsense thought, breeds nonsense action, breeds old age, disease and death. So we want to be very careful. Prabhupada was always very concerned. He didn't like to hear the devotees talking nonsense. Prabhupada would sometimes chastise his own servant talking uselessly. Okay, we'll go ahead. So Prajapo, Niyamagraha. Who is going to speak on this topic? Group four. four. Hare Krishna Maharaj. First Prabhu is going to speak and I'll just share my personal experience. Amrita Amrita Krishna Prabhu. Any about pronouns? Yes, Maharaj. Regarding this uh, Niyamagraha, the word itself, uh, Prabhupada is in his purport and also in his uh, lecture on this verse, uh, he is uh, explaining the meaning of Niyamagraha as uh, twofold. To be in the Niyamagraha means uh, only following the rules and regulations. And Niyama Agraha, the second one, second meaning, is uh, <coughs> acting whimsically and not paying any attention, the failure to uh, accept any rules and regulation is called Niyama Agraha. And both are detrimental for our spiritual life. The first one, Niyama, Niyama Agraha, because you are in Vaidhi Bhakti, the vidhi or the niyam, the rules and regulations appears very prominent to us, but uh, <laughs> unless we understand the spirit behind these uh, rules and regulations, it is uh, it may not bear the desired result. As the spirit behind all these rules and regulations are uh, mentioned in uh, Padma Purana, as just Martha Vyam Satatam Vishnu. Vishnu, Vishnu, Martavyam, Naja, Uchit, Sarve Vidhi, Nishedhasu, Etoyo, Eva, Inkaraha. All the rules and regulations are subordinate to these two principles. Always remembering Krishna and never forgetting Him. Always remembering Vishnu, not forgetting Him, and never forgetting Him. So, unless this <coughs> Vishnu Smarana is happening, all these rules and regulations uh, uh, will not bear the desired uh, result. So while in a Vaidhi Bhakti, following the rules and regulations, we must be always uh, analyzing ourselves whether we are only following the rules and regulations or uh, we are really remaining connected uh, on the basis of rem remembering the Lord. Because then it becomes uh, fruitful, it becomes uh, very complete. <coughs> and regarding uh, not following the rules and regulation, Niyama Agraha, is uh, explained by Krishna, Jasamastra Vidhim Utsujya Vartate Kamakarata, acting whimsically. If someone acts whimsically by neglecting all these rules and regulations, 
तो न सिद्धि मोती न सुखम न परांगति so that kind of person never gets any happiness neither in spiritual uh, neither in material world nor he gets uh, promoted to spiritual world. so in both the cases if someone is whimsically following uh, which whimsically acting and no, uh, not paying any respect any attention to the rules and regulations he is uh, mm, he can never become uh, uh, advance you make you can never make any uh, advancement in spiritual life just like we see in this uh, <clears throat> in case of uh, again nino uh, agraha we see this uh, christians they go and they confess to the um, uh, to the priest and uh, they keep on doing it and uh, again and again and again so with our uh, and uh, they make the mockery of this uh, system of this uh, rule that uh, uh, and some uh, in in some places they also do advance confession that i am going to do this all this so these things uh, are they're just following but the spirit behind this confession is to uh, reform ourselves repent on our uh, past deeds and uh, uh, act on our uh, past habits which is compelling us to commit uh, such uh, sinful activities so uh, this niyamagraha and niyamagraha both are detrimental to our spiritual life now uh, without uh, following any rules and regulation and acting musically or following all the rules regulation and paying all attention into following the rules and regulation whereas uh, we are forgetful of its uh, spirit behind this rules and regulation that is remembering of lord vishnu thank you okay madam ataji will share something uh, okay. Ve- very quickly yes could you say um, yes this two quotes that prabhu said is a quote that i always keep in front of my phone remembering my first uh, meeting with my guide when i was very new um, i was so fascinated by the way the living the living the way they were living and many things in the world of travel. So there was a little worry. My, there was nobody when I actually came for the first time in the temple. I mean, with my guide and others, but nobody was there. Just a few devotees were there. So uh, she introduced me about the whole process, gave me many books, and I started reading. And in that process, since I was reading, and I was coming for many programs in the temple, and she said me about following Ekadashi. And I said, okay, I will follow. I went back home. And she said that by following Ekadashi, we should not take Anna in this day, otherwise it's the same. So I followed. And then slowly, slowly, um, the, when, I, when I was very new, at that time, Vishma Panchak was very nearby. And then she said to me, if you do Vishma Panchak, then it would be more like, in terms of its benefit, she said, do this austerity, it's very good. And I did with her five days Vishma Panchak, I did the whole um, austerity. And then, uh, and then she said, now if you're able to do this, now you start doing Nirjala Ekadashi. This is very, very good. And I started doing Nirjala Ekadashi. But somehow, maybe my guide came to know that I was doing all these things. And then he called me and he asked me, uh, okay, you're doing all this austerity. So tell me, uh, what, 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 is the, uh, what is the purpose behind doing all this austerity? So I was very new and naive. So I just repeated the words of what Mataji had said. And then he just repeated this uh, I mean uh, the citation that Prabhu said about he who just uh, I mean the Padma Purana where he said that the most important thing the principal thing behind doing everything is remembering Krishna. It's not about this austerity that's going to be helpful. If it is not for spiritual advancement, that it is it is it is a failure and you just become it's just a sham labor table, it's just a just labor if you don't have the right consciousness by which you're doing. And then I said that this is very important and somehow this person explained that I was just doing it for the sake of doing it, not realizing what should I be thinking and what consciousness I should be doing. So yeah, this is my small experience that I had. Okay, thank you very much Madhuji. Interesting. So we're hearing uh, sometimes people too much attached to rules and regulations and we become fanatical. We want to follow all things like uh, Madhuji said, Nirjal fasting on Ekadasi. I heard Bhaktivinoda Thakur also chastised 
Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati telling him that in the Kali Yuga this kind of austerity is not necessary. And after Bhaktivinoda Thakur spoke to him in this way, then Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati also, he began to take fruit in the afternoon. But initially he was doing the full ecadasi. So uh, anyway, the, the, po the main point is to remember Krishna. The purpose of all of our austerities is to remember Krishna. Now sometimes people follow rules and regulations, they're looking for material gain. They expect to get some material benefit. They're thinking like that. That is also in a, quite wrong. The purpose has to be there, to please Krishna, to make spiritual advancement, to be a better devotee. And neglecting rules and regulations, acting independently and whimsically, of course we can never be successful in our devotional service if we neglect the rules and regulations. It's simply a disturbance to the society. Okay, uh, we'll speak a bit more about how Prabhupada adjusted this Niyamagraha later. We'll go ahead, the fifth item, Jnana Sangha, association with worldly minded people, group number five. Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanat Brahma. Maharaj, Ranganath Pro, Virat Pro, and myself would uh, try to speak on this uh, Jana Sangha fault. Uh, Ranganath Pro will speak on his personal experiences. Vinod Pro will speak on how devotees deal with Jana Sangha. And I will try to present my point of view on what is actually Jana Sangha. So, so Maharaj, Jana literally means people, and Sangha means their association. So Janasangha in this context refers to association of worldly minded people. So why we are advised not to associate with such persons? So Prabhupada says in the purport that all our Acharyas and also Prabhupada is saying that association of people with similar aspirations help us advance on the path towards our goal. So SP Sri Prabhupada gives example of Chamber of Commerce and stock exchange where materialistic persons assemble to fulfill their materialistic goals. Similarly, Prabhupada says that this Krishna consciousness society is established to give us a chance to associate with devotees who want to have a deeper connect with the Supreme Lord. So, one who is serious to advance in devotional service should accept such association and reject the association of those persons whose association take away from the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. So, uh, okay. this, uh, this, this is what I wanted to say. And now Vinod Prabhu will uh, share his experience of how devotees deal with this Jana Sangha. Thank you. Hare Krishna Magrath, please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, we are part and parcel of Krishna. We have a same quality, but we we are in the mood of material nature. We are struggling so much. So when we start to finding absolute truth, while well, we are finding where it is. So that time, so many people and bad association, we can't find the truth. So when we when we are in the situation, so my dad thought something. I asked him, we have a cow, so every week we have to bath them. So I asked him, in, in our village no one, no one was doing, why we are doing? I asked him, he told me, my dad told me we have to do like this. Then, okay. So I have to follow my dad telling it. And I, I asked my mom, my dad, dad is telling like this, what shall I do? To follow dad, that's it. So when we finding absolute truth, that time we have to concentrate only in the absolute truth. So that times we have a many distraction from various people because in the material, 
measure what we hear, what we saw, we think that is the correct. So that time I asked my dad, so why we are doing like this? He told me, asked we we have a Ram temple, my grand my grandfather built it. So he, he told me to ask him, I don't know. My dad told me I'm following. So you also follow, that's it. Then again, it's still going on. So I, I'm trying to start to uh, behind what is this, what is that? So that is happening. So right now I'm understanding what we are studying in Bhakti Sastri. I'm little bit understanding what they what they said to me in the behind. So then, so come to the point. So when we have a association, bad association, we, we don't bind with them like uh, lotus leaves when we put in the drop it it does not bind in the leaves it's always going here and there so we have to we have to uh, act like this so when we are doing like this so the normal 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 people will think what he is doing they will think they will speak but we don't, we don't hear, we don't bother that one. So the same thing happened. Uh, I I got uh, uh, Bhakti Risha class in Bangalore. So one Prabhu told me, one Prabhu invited me to come and uh, join in our class. And I went there. I asked him. First he started Bhag Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam. So I asked the questions. And he told me the, some answers. I'm a little bit interested. Then I'm 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 taking more more advantage to ask him, and uh, he told me to chant. So when I when I start my chanting, I went to my home with my big bag. My dad see like my dad see what what is this? <laughs> then I told him, um, I will tell you I will tell you later, Dad. So I am right now. I am in middle of testing. So I will tell you what I will get. Then I am start doing. We have a festival in uh, every year in our village. So that that uh, that year I didn't eat non-veg because we have a, a non-veg festival in our village. I, I didn't eat that. Uh, I didn't skip that festival. And my mom cook for vegetables for me. The next year, um, my my brother is sitting next year. He is eating um, non-veg. I'm eating vegetable. He asked me, "You don't want to eat? Why you are skipping uh, all those things?" Then I told him, "You will you will understand one day. Then next third year will come." So he is sitting uh, near to me. He is also eating vegetables. I send him to my poor, so he come back with feedback. So my dad shocked, what you done to my small son? Then, uh, so when we are strong in, uh, when we are strong in spiritual progress, anyone can turn in the devotional service, but we are not in the strong, so that time we will struggle more and more. So my preference is always chanting. So it's already mentioned in one one videos. Why you are wasting so much time to acquiring all those things, material material desires? Why don't you give one life for Krishna and go back to Godhead, uh, like that Prabhupada said? So then. Uh, Okay, so very... we are going in the path, so we have to do it more, and uh, I'm I'm doing more japa. Okay, so... very good. Thank you very much, Vinod Kumar Prabhu. So we've heard from you and about Janasanga, right? Particularly Janasanga, worldly-minded people. We stress you don't want to associate with people who are non-devotees. Right? Character of a devotee is 
They give up the association of non-devotees. So the Jana Sangha means these worldly-minded people. Also Mayavadis are in that category, as well as the materialists, the atheists, the people who are not in the devotional line. Generally, we don't like to associate with them. Okay, we have one group left. Loyam, is it? The last Sir, group. Thank you so much, yes. Uh, so, this is group 6, and we are going to do this on the last point. It is repeated, and uh, Prabhupada translates it as Loyam. It's given Loyam in the Shmopa. So, although Prabhupada uh, uh, discussed very small about this point, but a very beautiful presentation Prabhupada has given in the book. So, first we will understand what Prabhupada has given regarding Lollyam as a symptom. So, three symptoms has been given in the purport. First is that those yogis who uh, perform any uh, yoga or mystic performance just to achieve something mystic power or some siddhis, that is first category. Second category, Prabhupada Ji has mentioned about those Brahmagyanis who want to merge into the impersonal Brahma. And third category, Prabhupada Ji has mentioned about those hardcore materialists who want to achieve more and more attain more and more material prosperity. So these three points Prabhupada Ji has said that these three will all come under the category of lolyam, that is greed. Now uh, going further, Prabhupada Ji little bit talk about capitalism and communism. So, so this capitalism or communism, both the parties they want to achieve more and more the money or the wealth of that country. But Prabhupada says that till the time they don't understand that this money ultimately belongs to Krishna, both the way will not work, either capitalism or communism. So now we will see some examples from the scriptures and some practical examples to understand that how this lolyam works. So first we have seen, we will start from this hardcore materialist people who are always moving here and there to grab more and more material prosperity. So we understand from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita that 16.21 where Krishna says that there are three gates leading to this hell and one of that three gates is greed. So what is the consequence of greed is that the person, this Krishna says in, in Krishna's word, it is nashan, Nashanam Atmanaha, that is spiritual inclination of soul is destroyed and that's how person completely gets bewildered. And he, in the pursuit of attaining and achieving more and more, he don't know what to do and what not to do. So, similarly, we find the quote from Srimad Bhagavatam. I am unable to give the exact quote, but it's come in some, some section of Srimad Bhagavatam, where Narayani says that if a person is hungry and we provide him food, his, his hunger can be resolved. If he is thirsty and if we provide water, his thirst can be quenched. But anyone who is greedy, no matter how much we gave them, how much material um, property or prosperity we provide that person, the greed is never going to be satisfied. Similarly, again, we find the quote, very famous verse uh, from Shiva Shankaracharya. It says, Angam galitam palitam mundam, dasham vihinam jatam tundam, vritto yati ghritva dandam, tadapina muchati asha pindam. That no matter what happens, so this is a very practical verse we all can see in our day-to-day -day life that all the things have gone, but at the end of the life also, this asha pin, the desire to have more and more and more, it is never going, never going to go away. So this is some scriptural reference to understand uh, the, the symptom of greed. Now what is the solution? So regarding solution part, Srila Prabhupada, in the last section of this purport, um, he talks about Isha Vasa principle, which is a very beautiful solution for this uh, problem of greed. The moment a devotee or non-devotee accept this principle of Isha Vasya, that I have been provided my own quota and other person has been provided with his own quota. So at that time, he will stop this tendency of greed and this tendency of acquiring and grabbing the property of other people, which is, in other words, is a greed. So this is the first solution. Second solution for those people who are so-called spiritualist, who are looking as a spiritualist, but they are also a greedy person because they either want to merge into Brahman, ultimate greed, the last snare of Maya in the words of Rupal, or they want some mystic power by doing some yoga or some uh, ashtang yoga, some, 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 with some technique. 
so for them the solution is the right knowledge so as as bhagavatam says in 1.2.11 brahmeti parmatmeti bhagavan iti shabdate so first of all these people or we all also should understand that the ultimate reality ends in the bhagavan realization that is krishna is the supreme personality of godhead durbhut shams in the room and we the living entity has a very beautiful relationship of a survivor with the lord so there is no point in thinking or contemplating to get merged in the brahman so that's how that tendency of greed can be curbed by understanding this knowledge and as far as this last mystic yoga is concerned mystic achievement this can also be cured when we understand that there is no difference between the material greed or mystic power the greed for mystic power this is all on the same platform so propad ji in ishopanishad ishopanishad book in many of the purports of shiva propad says that this eight fold mystic process eight fold mystic path so there are many type of siddhis which we can achieve like lagima arunima and different types of siddhis this is this already has been achieved by the modern scientists so there is no difference between that greed and materialistic greed so this can also be curbed if we take the knowledge from the right type source and who can, what other source can be there than the divine book of shiva prabhupada so if anyone who reads the books of shiva prabhupada he will come out of all these illusions of greed and last point because uh, time is less so i will just wrap up here some practical examples from day to day life so one example which can be seen which i have seen a lot in my life so when i was in corporate so many of because we know that in india the employment condition is not very good it's very bad a lot of the people are not getting employed so first when they are in college they, they are dying for to get a simple job either they, even if they get 20000 rupees per month they will be very much satisfied satisfied in that so suppose in college placement they get their job if as soon as they will enter into the company from the first day itself they will start worrying about the next job i want to switch i want to get a job which with a, with a hike with a rise in pay and as soon as they get the second job then again they will be now they will start hankering about the government job i want to prepare for some government exam so that there can be more surety more security more pay and like this it goes on it goes on and on and on and i have personally seen my life that they have skipped three four jobs but even now they are not satisfied so this is the most common example of greed which we can see so that is all i wanted to say yeah. thank you very much Maharaj. thank you very much thank you very much prabhu very very powerful very clear and very uh well presented authoritative with the with the evidence from shilu prabhu's purport very nice i like that so we're hearing the danger of greed and how to counter it by well the, the desire for mystic power and uh, becoming one by knowledge and how to overcome the desire for simply material facilities your solution was simply we have we, we have to hear the futility the futility yeah the futility of it all right okay so like that uh okay so these six things have all been listed the uh shrila proper begins with the atyahara arupa goswami begins atyahara the very first one and atyahara is certainly very evident in the life of devotees isn't it you know coming to krishna consciousness we all have that tendency i don't know about you but when i became a devotee one of the things i did when i first became a devotee i gave away everything i gave away all my books i went to the public library and gave all my books and i gave away all my all the things i i had which i knew i didn't need really i'm going to be a devotee but then when you become a devotee and then we start to collect more again and you get so many books and you get so many different things for some time it was cassette tapes then it became cd's and then it's uh, mp mp3s and <laughs> you know the technology changes and we still have so many things from the past just like the the clothes and the fashions you get clothes and oh this is out of date we don't wear this anymore we have the collecting problem so what do you think about that prabhupad solution to all of that of course prabhupad speaks about simple living 
and high thinking. He, he begins that purport talking about the need for simple living. We need to, Krishna consciousness movement is meant for that. I appreciated very much Chan Master Mead Prabhu's point about the young child, that if you want to protect your children from all the material desires, best thing is to bring them to the Holy Dham and raise them here in Mayapur where they're away from that consumer society. Living in a materialistic city, materialistic environment, very, very damaging for the mindset of the children. So it's certainly very nice. You can bring your children over here to Mayapur, put them in the Gurukula if possible. If they, want, if they can't make it in the Gurukula, then even the international schools are a lot better than the ordinary uh, schools in the city where all the children are not devotees and they're all meat eaters and they watch all garbage television and do all kinds of bad things. So the environment is very important. So these problems are there. Ajahara. And because of Ajahara, then the next thing comes, prayashas. We want more. We never have enough. As Prabhu was just saying, the greed. So we endeavor greatly. People are not satisfied. One job is not enough. The women also have to go to work. The women are all working. Not only the fathers working, women are also working, everybody. You don't find hardly women nowadays who stay at home, very less common. The women all go to work, the children come home, nobody's there, or they have to go to the grandmother. So women are at work all day, they come home, they're tired, they don't want to cook, they've been working all day, they've been associating with men all day, and so they come home and they're they're not satisfied with their husband because they've been talking to other men all day. So many problems come, working women. Why? Because of ajahara and prayashas and loyam, these things. We want more, but not satisfied. And so these are big problems for devotional service. Of course, coming to Krishna consciousness doesn't mean that we have to be artificially renounced. We have to have a certain standard of living. Naturally, you want your child to be educated. Children also have to learn how to use the hand phone, but they have to be careful. You have to train what to do with them, what to do with the hand phone. Should they just watch movies all day? So, so many dangers are there. Any of you, can, can you give some comments about Ajahara, how, how you like to deal with it yourself in your own life or with your family members? Ranganath Prabhu, would you like to comment? Ranganath Prabhu? Yeah, Hare Krishna. But as uh, 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 doesn't only mean eating too much, it also mean to save uh, more than what is necessary and acquire things more than what is necessary. So for doing this, you have to spend a lot of time, do hard work. As a result, you don't find time for Krishna consciousness. And you always give the text, I have no time. So, he uh, can never take center at the lotus speed of Krishna. And always suffer from anxieties. This is the result of what they have. And always can sense that the relation. Uh, uh, 
I can give an example, a recent example, during my doctor on my death on 14th February, uh, I requested my family members, son, daughter, and uh, my wife. Uh, we will have a grand feast, but kindly avoid non veg But it was not to be. They were very offended. They left me alone, went outside, hosted a very grand party with non veg Even I did not attend that marriage party. So, this is their nature. Hare Krishna. No. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, sometimes difficulty dealing with family members. Uh, family family members, not devotees, is <laughs> so often not not cooperative. Sometimes they're very much opposed to someone in the family being different. So I got lot of I started more time, started more work, and now I just decided to leave home and do the one first. Okay, very good. That's that's the Vedic system, right? Panchasodvam vanam brajit from the age of fifty. From the age of fifty, one should leave the home, go from the home. Prabhupada also saw the same thing, although his family were not uh, openly against him being vegetarian, but you know they were not so favorable. His wife didn't like so much preaching, so Prabhupada saw the difficulties being at home. So he left home and he got Krishna's mercy from that. He was able to achieve success. Okay, uh, any, any Matijis would like to point out something about Ajahara? Can we hear something from a, a Mataji? How they deal with Ajahara? What about this uh, Murti Sri? Murti Sri Madhiji? Yes, Hare Krishna. How do you deal with Ajahara? Hare Krishna. Can you, am, am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Can Thank you. Can you hear me, please? Yes. So, um, these are the don'ts. These are the things which has been pointed out here. So, uh, we can challenge it like that. Why? Why not go for Tehara? So we can practice that fasting for Damadharma month, Purushottam month, one day, once in three years, or like that, and can see the result of it. How is it's going to help us in Krishna consciousness? What is the difference when I started um, fasting? And what is the difference I've been feeling? What is the difference in consciousness or like that after I and it. I'm more wor I'm more worried to know Hare Krishna. I'm more worried to know about over collecting, about your accumulation of worldly goods, not just eating, but I want to know how you deal with the the, the aspect of you know having more and more clothes this, and. This, okay, okay. This naturally this will go naturally. Because if we more, keep us more and more engaged in serious devotional activities, which needs our punctuality, which demands our attention more and more, this, uh, uh, this uh, reading or like courses like Bhakti Shastri and uh, Bhakti Paivav and all, so uh, this will automatically uh, take us away from this materialism. Uh, because we will have to be seriously devoting time to it, uh, doing so many things uh, and, uh, for this uh, crash courses. And, uh, and if we become teachers or if we seriously go for some preaching activities or what Krishna demands from us. So uh, this serious activities and uh, devotional service will take us away from this materialistic materialism naturally. Uh, this is what I feel. So uh, we need to think of everything, every details, 
but uh, we have to take care of two or three things like not overeating. Yeah, we have to eat in our proper time, time maintain timings of eating and proper, proper maintain uh, quality and quantity of eating hmm, like that. And uh, so that we can wake up early and do our sadhanas and properly. And this uh, materialism will go automatically as we go seriously more and deep into service. And um, and things uh, more things we have more time they will take for us to take care because more furnitures we have we have to go for more dusting more cars we have we have to take care of them more and more things they take more and more time away from us and less and less Krishna consciousness that is so you have to have a focus have to be serious with Krishna consciousness listen to a guru what whatever he says we have to follow. And following this, following him, it will take us away automatically. We need not be so seriously of nitty of these things. So if you follow a guru and sadhus and our shiksha gurus and all, who, who are realized souls, so this will automatically take us away from the materialism. Okay. So is that... Uh, all, all right. Thank you, Manaji. Yeah. So... Maharaj, we have Amritesh Krishna Prabhu would like to say something. Uh-huh. Amritesh Prabhu? You're muted, Amritesh Krishna Prabhu. Can't hear you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. As far as I understand this principle of Atyara has to be decided as per a uh, social uh, uh, position of a person. If uh, like our uh, uh, like a brahmachari is having uh, more than four sets of clothes or uh, a ordinary grihastha is having uh, three or four, uh, four different uh, versions of cars. For a person who is a, uh, who is running a big business, for him to having uh, to have a car is may not be atyahar, but to have a band of cars with so many luxuries that so what I mean to say according to our social position, what is bare necessity should be uh, should be decided by proper guidance from advanced devotees. So, so our, as per our social uh, situation or position, the amount of material things authorized for us and beyond which it will be